Hey everyone, the name is Rick Dorn. In today's video, I want to talk about the Enneagram 2, the caregiving type. And what I want to first of all dispel is the myth that caregivers are always kind and people oriented. I want to say that the most important trait when understanding the caregiver is their strong sense of duty and responsibility. Duty is the most important to the Enneagram 2, and that is uh, that means Enneagram 2s don't want to just be nice. Enneagram 2s feel a duty to people and to the system and uh, they act on this sense of duty. They compromise their own needs for this sense of duty. They come from the perspective that this duty is more important than my personal needs or my personal interests. So what you might be wanting to learn when you're studying the Enneagram 2 is uh, not necessarily um, am I necess sometimes supportive and nice to other people. It is Am I often acting and do I prefer to act out of a sense of duty? Do I value duty over work or over play? Am I prepared to uh, quit work to uh, go help somebody who I feel obliged to help, who needs my help? Do I, am I prepared to neglect my creative pursuits and my ideas and what I'm working on to uh, help and to support the people around me? How bound do I feel by my own sense of duty? Do I compromise my need for play and for having fun and for going out with friends and for having new experiences and having fun for doing what I feel is my biggest sense of duty? And if you say yes to these questions, that suggests that you are an Enneagram 2 type. If you find yourself instead saying, I struggle to act out of duty, I can procrastinate, I sometimes forget to pay taxes and bills, I sometimes find myself uh, uh, like uh, uh, struggling to clean my room even though my parents told me to and I um, tend to find myself playing video games rather than uh, engaging in my creative pursuits or uh, in uh, helping a friend who needed my help. So what do you feel the most torn between? Duty is the principal concern of the two. Why is duty the principal concern of the two? Well, because duty comes from this sense of uh, what gives us gratification and what makes us feel we have done something good. So when the two is able to act out of sense of duty and to honor duty and to be there for, for their friends and to help them, they feel good. And here, Another important trait that's very important to understand in the two is the two comes from a perspective that is a lot more about control and about direction. And I mean this in the sense that the two will find themselves sometimes uh, trying to manipulate or control other people for the sake of greater good. Helping people realize what they need to do, helping me pe make people make sure they do what is most important, making sure people uh, fulfill commitments and uh, that people do what is right. So when other people are not acting in line with how you think they should be acting because of your strong sense of duty and because of your strong awareness of what needs to be done and what is the right thing to do, the two, you as a two, will find yourself in this... Uh, trap of uh, getting frustrated with them for not doing the right thing and for taking uh, for not understanding that it's important to do this thing and you'll find yourself wanting to act and to intervene to make sure they do the right thing and uh, this is what can draw the nice person to the bad guy you know seeing that they need your help to understand how important it is to act and in this kind of interchange kind of learning that sometimes it's okay to let go of responsibility and have fun a little more and to let loose. That is often the lesson. But what you have to understand when it comes to this principle of work, uh, of play, of duty or of creative expression is the two shares this uh, tree drive of... Uh, work uh, and the, in the sense of they can put a lot of energy into something or into a task or into what they think is important just like the tree will but the, where the tree will do it 
to perform well or to do well at something, the two will do it for the sake of the group and for making sure everyone is performing well and that everyone is happy and that everything everyone has their needs met. So the two is overextending their own boundaries and going into the realm of the other people and of other what other people need and what other people, uh, what the group as a whole de deserves. So the two has like the muse type a tendency to focus on the other rather than on the self so this is very important to remember being other oriented rather than self oriented and because of this a lot of twos may go into this uh, where they constantly act out of duty and suddenly they get so frustrated and they get so bored and so drained by everyone that they're putting their energy into that they get into this uh, uh, momentary lapse of selfishness you might call it where they go from being very nice and from being very understanding and from being very helpful to lashing out on another person and how could you why didn't you do that why like that sense of uh, just uh, feeling like everyone around you is being selfish or that nobody else is thinking about you and that nobody else listens to you or cares about you Feeling like you are the only person that cares and that nobody else cares about you. That sense of disconnection is very common when you're other oriented rather than self other oriented. So the self oriented types like the creators and the performers, they're always working on themselves and their own project. But uh, the other oriented types like the muse and the caregiver is always working on other people. So, work adds into this equation and they, it adds into this in uh, also understanding how exhausting it can be to be a two at times, uh, how exhausting it can be to have to uh, always put so much energy into the task or into what you do. It's not just about uh, doing it, it's not just about showing up, it's about really putting yourself into the task, really putting 100% of your energy into the task. You know, other people, they might be helpful and they might be nice and they might show up, but they might not go beyond this. And here's something that really helped me understand that I wasn't a two. I can be kind. As a feeling and judging type, as an INFJ, Myers-Briggs type indicator, that makes sense. I can be kind to other people. I have a value of appreciating kindness, of doing things for other people. But what I notice in twos is that twos go beyond uh, this and they also go into they really want to do the right thing and they want to do it well for other people so the two comes from this orientation of work and pushing themselves into a task so making sure it's really clean making sure that the homework is done really well making sure that uh, uh, something is really handled where sometimes I might find myself going into a task and doing it and maybe doing it 75% and people go, what happened to the other 25%? And uh, for me, that's enough. I feel like, oh yeah, but I was kind and I did something nice and that's good enough. But for the two, I find that the two can sometimes uh, feel if they're not doing enough or if they're not uh, putting themselves into somebody else's situation and not really getting into that or re not really helping enough or solving the problem, they feel helpless and they feel weak. Like, why can't I help this person? Why can't I do anything for them? Why am I not able to solve their problem? It can be very difficult for the two when they're not able to solve another person's problem or not able to help them with their situation. And that can be especially difficult when you're realizing that another person has a problem that will probably last for a lifetime or for many years. Or when you realize that another person is in a situation that will take a very long time to resolve because uh, of personal blocks or struggles or depression or other things that a person might be going through. And it might also be difficult as a two to realize that you can't help everybody. Not everyone can be fixed, not everyone can be saved, or not everyone can be taken care of in that level. Now, if you go more towards the saving aspect, then you're touching more on the hero archetype than on the giver. Uh, but if you focus pri primarily on the caregiving what you also want be, might be noticing as the two uh, 
they are more interested in acting to take care of the problem than to fix it. So the two is more going to be focused on what can I do to take care of this problem? This person has a struggle, what can I do to take care of it? Um, where other types might come more from the perspective of how can I make sure this problem goes away or is resolved and that this person learns to fix it on their own. So the two can call far, far in, fall into the trap of codependency in the sense of uh, making other people overly reliant on your help making other people feel they can't do it themselves, that they need you to tell them, uh, making other people basically do nothing where you're not around and when you don't tell them to do it and when you're not there to help them, and uh, falling into the trap into feeling that you have to do everything for everyone. Consider the quote, teach a person to fish and they have food for their lifetime. Uh, give a person a fish and they have food for a day. The two can sometimes fall into the trap of that uh, purely like momentary like giving a person a fish for a day so that's important to recognize in yourself uh, it's almost as if there is a need to be needed in the two like if other people don't need my help if they don't need my fish they will if they become self-reliant I will become alone so twos may fall into this trap but that's more a sign of being unhealthy and self-realized twos can actually become great teachers and often call themselves mentors or work uh, with helping people with coaching and aid and solutions and teaching people to find solutions to their problems. So what's important to recognize besides the two is the two's antagonist shape, the two when unhealthy. The two has a caregiving form. So when, uh, when they go dark they fall almost into the harm giver that is often uh, when they feel somebody has done something wrong they can fall into this harm giver form instead of caregiving they might find themselves wounding or hurting other people and uh, why would they do that why would a person that's so nice do something like that well often from the priority of still wanting to be nice often the two might realize that if it's not possible to help a person by being nice then maybe I can help them by being rude. And uh, it can also happen that the harm giving role comes more out of uh, when the two is protecting one of their friends or trying to show care to another person. They might be willing to hurt other people in that situation. They might be willing to, uh, they might feel this aggressive impulse and uh, this desire to. Uh, manipulate or make other people feel weak or make other people feel small and uh, this is also mostly manifested not necessarily in violence but more in uh, hurtful comments and saying things you don't mean all of a sudden saying uh, something that makes another person feel hurt and upset and uh, weak and uh, uh, in this there is like that uh, what I told you before that uh, uh, why don't you ever do anything? Why don't you ever help out at home? Why do I have to do everything? That is, that is uh, one of the co most common lash outs the two will fall into from uh, overly giving of themselves, happily giving of themselves. And that should be said, the caregiving type comes from a healthy desire to help other people. And uh, in this, uh, they are doing it because they think it's the right thing to do. And because they like doing it and uh, they do, of course, uh, to a certain point. But of course, when that point is crossed, uh, duty can become too heavy to carry or it can start feeling insurmountable. And it is when duty starts feeling insurmountable, when it starts feeling too heavy, too much. And when you start feeling like you can't help other people or like you're not able to help them enough or when you start getting too burdened by the struggles of other people that is when the two is at risk of going dark it is lack of confidence uh, that brings this about and it is uh, starting to second guess your values starting to feel like people are using you or manipulating you or taking advantage of you and in this lashing out to make sure people don't take advantage of you and then after that happens, the two will often resume their kind behavior, the nice behavior, and will resume this supportive role. But perhaps there will be some kind of fallout between uh, you and the other person. 
uh, that has to be resolved and uh, something that will have to be done to restore balance in this case. Now I told you feeling and judging and kindness has nothing to do with being a two and uh, being kind is not the same thing like being diplomatic, being people oriented, uh, liking to uh, focus on values and quality and feeling that doesn't necessarily make you more likely to be a two. Often I see a spectrum where people say thinkers are mean where feelers are nice. But what I've found is that thinking and judging types might come from the two perspective as well. I've seen thinking and judging types put themselves hard into uh, an ambition or into a challenge or uh, something like that because they think that will help other people. I see some like Elon Musk, for example, probably fueled very heavily by this. He is not putting, uh, he is not making his work about himself is making that work about saving the world and helping other people and I think uh, that is my argument for why he could be a two and I think also thinking and perceiving types might come from the perspective that I need to be strong and I need to become better at the task so that I can use it to help other people and I can see as well the feeling and perceiving type also manifesting two traits but more in the perspective of uh, uh, working on themselves and their character and making sure that they are acting in a uh, in congruence with their ethics and with their beliefs. So all of that is just healthy to behavior, but from different values. When your values differ, um, that does not necessarily change your Enneagram type. It only change how they manifest and how you express it. So that's important to consider. So thank you all for watching this video and for tuning in and if you all like this video feel free to leave a like and to share it with other twos and with other people that you want to understand you as a two better. What you can always tell them is uh, help me help you, help me make it easy to help you, tell me what you need, make sure people don't play games with you, make sure people tell you straight away that they're honest with you with what you, they need from you and uh, make sure that uh, you are setting boundaries and that you're uh, calming yourself down when you start feeling overwhelmed, when it gets too much, when it feels like you can't help everyone. Focus on the ones you can help. Focus on the positive. What can I do? I can't do everything, but what can I do? How can I make this better? I might not be able to solve the problem, but how can I make it better? And uh, realize that you don't have to do everything, that enough is enough and uh, that you are enough the way you are. And uh, that uh, people, you don't need to be needed. People will love you no matter what you do. And even if you sometimes say no, even if you don't always do what they want, they will say they will appreciate you and they will still love you for the things you do. So that's just good things to have in mind. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.